Um, so I will share my screen here, and we'll start with a small journey. Why are we creating this? So the App Builder is a UX-driven, no-code tooling that adds as a software as a service directly into our DXP portal. So formerly known account portal, now DXP portal, will add not only the mobile build service as a SaaS, but also now the App Builder as a SaaS. The App Builder has as a goal uh, technical requirements to um, being able to bring everyone together. Business people, IT people, collaboration. Why? Because the goal is to enable anyone to build applications, but without shortfalls. You should not have the need to actually do... Yeah, that's fine. You shouldn't have the need to um, having to change what you are thinking. You can just put your thinking into a prototype, connect to your, with an Excel data, for example, connect with example data. But then when you want to take this into a live application, the changes are minimal. So everything that you connect from the UI to the data, the sample data, will be available and ready-made for you to connect to your live data. So the effort from your IT will be as minimal as possible. This tool has capabilities such as knowing what the end users will be, how they are using the application, knowing and collecting feedback directly from them, but then is also a place for you to put your ideas. How? We humans draw ideas. How many of you haven't been in, in a meeting where you just start sketching? So we grabbed that idea last November. And we thought, okay, what can we do to turn how people work and think into applications, but making it as easy as possible? We looked into services that would allow us to realize this idea, and over a period of a weekend, this was materialized in what we announced, or we didn't announce, we just put it out as sketch to app. It was an idea. So turning a sketch from, um, from a piece of paper, taking a picture, then use machine learning and AI model that we have uh, taught to identify which UI components are actually drawn by the person. And turn it into an application that you can then connect to your data and make the changes needed, branding, etc. So all of this and hopefully now it's working. <laughs> All of this done in a very fully automated way. So when we were brainstorming many years ago, how can we use machine learning AI into development tools? The question came, it's like, why? Well, the reason is to make it easy. So Neptune makes apps easy. As easy as drawing a sketch. How can I leverage that on that and then take it further? That's where the magic happens. And then hopefully, I'll be able to put up my screen and be able to show you live demo. And it will be interactive demo. So pull up your phones. You're going to be part of this. Walking here on the wild side. You're doing a great job, Heather. Thank you. So what you see here is the DXP portal. We did a soft launch last week on Friday, Thursday, if I don't, uh, if I recall correctly, where we just changed the look. Same services as the account portal. New look. Okay. So what we will do here today after the demo is that we're going to launch the app builder live on stage. So what you see here is the app builder, no code, straight from the account portal. And it starts by asking you, how, what do you want to do? I want to create a new project. And by creating a new project, I'll be able to then to um, demo impact 
22. I want to run it start on a tablet. Then it says, OK, let's select type of template. I have a blank idea. I want to start from my data. And we, on the development of this tool, who were our testers? Not our engineering, not our go-to-market, not our customer success people. So no developers were involved on making market proofing on this product. Who did we use? Our HR, our sales reps, our marketing. They're the ones that actually tested it. And everyone had a, a different perspective on it. Salespeople want, how do I start with my data? Marketing people were like, OK, forget data. I want how it looks. Every single business user or business technologist has a different perspective of where to start. So we gave them that opportunity. Should we start? First, let's start with a template. And they ask you directly, what type of screen do you need? First things that we learned is that business users don't call pages to applications. They call it screens. This screen, that screen. So this is catered to help anyone with a very easy way of speaking. So here, if I search for something, like I want my first page to be an overview page, this will now search within 773 pages that I have on my company account, seeing what others have developed that can be an overview page. This is done dynamically tagging. We are indexing everything that has been built so that if I want to reuse something, I don't have to create it from scratch. Reusability is the key. Let's say that I would like to have something like this. I pick this one as my first screen. Looks very good. I have an iPad. What, what else can I do? Well, can I, have, can I see how it looks on a mobile? Yes. Can I tilt my mobile? Yes, of course I can. Can I see it on the desktop? Yes, I can. Then, can I change it? Of course you can. So everything in here is catered for learning by doing. So on the top, that little green uh, slider there, or level, it's, the aim is to get to 100%. How do I get to 100%? How do I learn this tool? So the tool proactively, as you try things around, like we typically do, clicking around, will tell you what you should be doing and give you, giving you very simple GIFs, animated GIFs of how to do it. But if you do it by accident, it will tell you, oh, you just did this. Did you realize? Then the person learns. So there is actually no e-learning here. Gamification of the development experience. Then I find it very annoying, the fact that I don't have 100%, so I will thrive to get 100%. But maybe that's me, I came to realize. Because nobody else cared about that. <laughs> but then we have also building blocks, application building blocks. What are these? Can I create some? Yes, you can. You can create fragments of applications that are not UI components. It's not, no business user know what the UI component is. But if you're building an HR application, you're going to know what are contact details, what are uh, leave requests, what are new members to the company, notifications panel, favorites, settings. You can relate to that. Can you change it? Of course you can. Can you create new ones? Of course you can. So by adding them, how do I actually add here something? So let's add this one directly in there. This pops up a dialogue telling you most popular. What does this mean? Is that it's running analytics on all of the applications that are creating using this tool, all of them, and it's telling you the probability of your next few steps. So in a way, a way to guide you, saying, oh, I add here, it's a component that I don't even know what the component is. I add that, and auto automatically it's telling me that I could add other things says, oh, I want a form. And then, oh, typically on a form, you have a date picker. And automatically, I have here a date picker. Then I can click on my component. It tells me the most common properties of that component that I can do. And one thing I, we realize is that 
users don't like, or business users don't understand what copy is. They think it's copy-paste. But duplicate, they do know. And then you can duplicate things very easily. And it's not working, of course. There you go. So it becomes very easy to create a better experience. But better than me trying, let's have you guys trying it. So if you can pull up your phones and scan that QR code, you're going to see live the app on your phone. And as I change the app, I will not only be collecting how you are using the application, every change I do, you will get it without having to touch it. So this collaborative experience should enable you and other business and IT to share what you're doing, collaborate, and be able to utilize it in, in a wider space. No authentication needed. You can just run it. Anyone? Everyone? Got it? So let's say that I go in here on my first, and I add here to the title saying Neptune Impact. Look at your screens. And that should be there. It doesn't work offline, this update, though. Only online. So I can clearly create this, but I, can I do more? Can I, can I start from data? Can I start from a sketch? Yes, you can. So we have this feature where I can just upload here a sketch. And now it's using a machine learning engine or artificial intelligence to identify all the components that I had there, even what I wrote with my hand. But can I change it? Oh, I don't want to redraw it, taking a picture again and upload it. No, I want to do it here. So say that I forgot here to add an image. So I add an image component there, and then I click on Generate App. The app is generated. Can I change it? Of course. Let's move this up there. Let's change it to something that looks better. And now let's add a background. How can you navigate there? Easy. Let's say that I have a button here. And on the button, I want to go to a specific screen like that. So now you'll be on this view. And if you click on the first one, it will take you to the form. So how easy this experience is, is that we can then have a much more easy way to create applications from data, from a sketch, from a blank page. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Now, just before we go, thank you. Just before we go, let's make this tool available to the world. So I'm just going to change here a setting, save, going to the launch pad. This is live, directly in production. So if I refresh, come on, internet. Um, fresh again. <laughs> it's life. <laughs> thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Andrea.